Tottenham Hotspur 4, Aston Villa 1. What a second half performance from Tottenham Hotspur. They absolutely tore Villa apart in that second half. Because I have to say, I was really impressed by Villa's first half performance. Amadou Anana really impressed me. I thought Villa looked really fresh in that first half. And Villa did rest a lot of their players um, in the Carabao Cup midweek. So I think Villa's freshness was shown there, whereas Tottenham had to go quite strong versus City. But in the second half, the energy from Tottenham was immense. And Saar was key to that. Saar was my man of the match today. I think his ability to cover ground, he was absolutely everywhere. Pick up the ball and drive forward, was helping Tottenham in transitions, but he was also stopping Villa transitions. He was key for two of the goals today, just winning back the ball and covering every inch of grass. And while I was so impressed with Amadou Anana in that first half, what Saar did in that second half really stole the show. I did think he had a good first half. And this is the second time I believe Tottenham have put four past Villa. Ange does love to play Aston Villa. And I have to say, while Villa were the better team in the first half, I think Tottenham absolutely deserved the win. You can look at the statistics here, 2.63 XG to Villa's one. Point eight five. I also want to give a shout out to Solanke. I thought he was really good today. I'm really happy for Solanke and the fact that he got his goals. So even though I'm not a Tottenham fan, I really wanted Solanke to get goals because of FPL, but also because he's been getting a lot of criticism lately. And I think it's, I think he can improve elements of his game for sure, his box presence and stuff. But I feel like some of the critici- criticism on Solanke has been a bit unfair because when I watch Tottenham with him, his presence alone, I think, makes Tottenham better. I think his, you know, his hold-up play, his link-up play, sometimes he is playing as like a DM at times, but the shift that he puts in, I think Tottenham are a better team with him in the side. I think people don't realise what he does in terms of his pressing, the system. I thought Tottenham's pressing was fantastic today. I think Villa are not one of the best teams at playing out from the back, despite them being one of the best teams this last year in the Premier League. And I think... Tottenham cause problems, but I do think Tottenham have some, you know, a few things they need to improve. I think defensively Tottenham could definitely be a bit better, particularly in the first half they looked a bit open. Obviously injuries, Mickey van der Ven being missing isn't going to help. We're talking more detail about that. I think there were some vulnerabilities in Tottenham, but also people have got to remember, remember that Andrew's only just over a year into his Tottenham tenure. This is his second season, you know. I think Tottenham are a very good side. I've said this for a while. I think Tottenham because I think they were eighth or ninth in the league going into this game. I think some people sort of look at that and think, yeah, Tottenham aren't great. Ange isn't doing great, la de la But in my perspective, Ange is doing well. I think Tottenham are doing good. And I think Tottenham are on track for a top five finish. Top five is going to get back in the Champions League next year. And when you look at the context in the context of this being Ange's second season, he's taken over from, you know, the Nunos, the Mourinho's, the Contes, which is such a different approach. He's got to completely rebuild the Spurs side with such a young team. I think, you know, top five would be a really good finish for Spurs. I think that, would, that they would show they're on track. They're scoring more goals. I think they are improving. Yes, there's some games where they're good in the first half, like Brighton, but bad in the second half, like Leicester as well. Today, not great in the first half, but really good in the second half. I think they need to be a bit more consistent. But I think when you look at the context of Spurs and where they're at in their project and where they're at in the rebuild, I do think Spurs are on track is the way I would describe it. I don't think they're going to win every game and play perfect every game for 90 minutes. I mean, no team does that. But I think when you look at where they are, I think they're on the right track. They're doing well. And I think that, you know, that second half performance from Spurs, the energy was was really good. I think, obviously, the individual quality showed, you know, the Solanke finish, the Kulu pass for the second goal, the Son cross for the first goal, the Madison wow for the fourth goal, even Richarlison with a fantastic cross for the third goal. But, I thought that Ange got it absolutely spot on today. He was brave. Benching Madison, I think, is... I think I've got the Tottenham lineup here. I think you needed Benson, Kerr and Saar because you needed to cut out the pass lanes. You needed to stop Villa on the transition where they're quite lethal. I think Amadou Anana and Yuri Tiedemans is one of the best midfield pivots in the league. And I think... um, and knew that's where he's got to stop Villa, that midfield pivot. And I thought that actually the defensive shift and the ground coverage that Saar and Benta could put in was key. And I think, you know, dropping Madison's difficult because he's a good player. And there was times in the game where I think Tottenham might have needed Madison for that final pass. And then he came on and he scored a three kick. But I also think that Ange was brave and he got it right. Taking off Son, I was thinking, is he crazy? I don't think Son had the best first half, but I thought Son really grew into the game in that second half. And then that second half, he put in that cross that led to the first goal. He started to look a bit dangerous. He came on, off injury prevention for Richarlison, which I was like, mm, Richarlison was looking a bit. And then Richarlison puts in that really good cross. Obviously, unfortunately, has to come off after that. But I thought Ange got it right. I think he took some risks and that worked. And I thought he must have said something to Tottenham at, at half time because Villa definitely looked fresher, more up for it in the first half. But the way Tottenham came out, so aggressive, so up for it, just desperate to attack. Um, you know, Villa was struggling. I think, you know, there was... The injuries disrupted momentum a little bit, but 
Tottenham just went and went and went and went for them in the second half. Saar just took control of that midfield. I think he was key to it, just his energy, his legs, his drive forward. And I thought that all of a sudden Spurs were winning those first balls, second balls. They were first to the ball. They were breaking up play. They were winning the ball back. They were driving forward. And Villa were really struggling to to get out and, and deal with it. And I think the athleticism of Saar was so key in this game. And I think Ange got it right dropping Madison for Saar. And if you look at Ange here, last 10 games for Spurs, he's played the likes of City and Villa. Eight wins, two losses, 26 goals scored, 10 goals conceded. I see people with Ange out this, Ange out that. I know a few results didn't go Tottenham's way. I didn't watch a Crystal Palace game, but I know you lost 1-0. But I think you're going to have blips in the road. It's not going to be perfect. You're not going to win every game. But when you look at Spurs as a collective this season, I don't know where you are in the league table, and I'll have to check that. Obviously, I think you were 8th or ninth before this game. But if you watch Spurs play... There's progress going on. They're better. The underlying numbers are good. I'm comfortable Spurs finishing. The, I, I'm confident Spurs finishing the top five. And I'm saying that as a Man United fan, I've been quite positive about Spurs this season because I look at the context of Spurs, the project, it's not going to be perfect. I think Solanke makes them better. Johnson's getting better. Saar, Benzko, Kuliseski, Madison, they all offer something. You've got Gray and Bergwald to mould in. The big question mark for me is the left centre-back, left-back depth because Adogi and Van der Ven have injury issues. But, I want to talk about Saar um, because Saar was my man of the match today. Um, I saw this tweet from the Spurs Express. Let's talk about this man today. Ran the entire midfield and was tremendous in transition. Villa couldn't handle his energy in the second half. What a player. This is Tottenham's midfielder, uh, Pap Saar, appreciation post. And I think he was man of the match today. His energy, his legs. I describe Saar here as a ground-eating monster. Absolute ground-eating monster because... The game was open at times. Villa wanted to transition, Tottenham wanted to transition. And this guy had the legs to cover every blade of grass, be there to intercept the ball, win it back. And when he got the ball, he didn't stop. He just got the ball and he dribbled forward. You look at the third goal, the, the winning back the ball, the dribbling, the passing to Richardson. He was fantastic. He was the standout performer for me. I thought, um, you know, Amadou Nana really impressed me in the first half. Second half, Saar just came at him. And I think his aggressiveness, his pressing, his ground coverage, his ability to chase and win those second balls. I think Spurs needed that injection of energy and I think it came through Saar winning back the ball, driving forward. It gave Spurs almost this push to get forward, push Villa back, press them in. And then the momentum was just going Tottenham's way. It was sort of waves of Tottenham attacks, waves of Tottenham attacks. And I think it came through Saar because if you look at the first two goals, Saar winning back the ball, his drive, his ball carrying skills were excellent today. He might not be the most technical passer when it comes to breaking the lines and stuff, but I think his movement, his energy, his off the ball work and his carrying is really key. And I think in games like this against Villa, that's when you see it the most. And I think that's when Tottenham won it the most. And I thought he was really, really effective today. And I think he just started to take control of that midfield, quieting Anana in the second half, you know, really doing well at breaking up the play, the defensive shift he put in, and then driving the ball forward and getting Spurs forward. And I think him and Benzica worked really well. They were covering the ground. They were winning back the ball. It was a difficult game. And I just think the pure athleticism of Saar, you know, people used to talk about Sung Park at United as the man with the iron lungs. I thought his lungs, his ability to run over every inch of grass, continue running, win back the ball, drive forward. He was mint today. He was absolutely fantastic. And going into Solanke, I think he's been getting a lot of stick lately, but I think we've seen from Solanke this season. His hold-up play is really good. He brings teammates into attack. And I think he is limited of service. I know that he has had service. And I know that sometimes Tottenham put good crosses in and he's not quite in the box. And I think his box presence could improve and he could be a bit more lethal in the box. But I think he's been over-criticised lately because if you watch Solanke, his press, his work rate, what he does, people might say he doesn't score you know, in the last few games. He's not fully influenced the game. But actually, his pressing does help Tottenham. It made it difficult for Villa. Him and Kling in the last few games has worked really well. You know, His link-up play, his hold-up play, dropping deep, holding the ball, retention, winning back the ball. Sometimes, yeah, you just want him to be in the box to score those chances. He's not always there. But I think Tottenham looked better with him and the team, the focal point that he provides. And I think, you know... I think a lot of times he gets given the ball and he's got a turn and he's got given the ball in these difficult circumstances. But today he got behind the Villa line for the first goal. Kuliseski, what a pass. I don't think he had his best game today, Kuliseski, but that moment, that pass, inch perfect, really talented player. But he got behind the line, got the ball in front of him, which is what he wants. Absolutely fantastic finish. Second goal runs onto it, striker's instinct. And that's what you want. And he's now the first Tottenham player to score four goals in his first eight Premier League matches since Raphael van der Vaart in 2010. So that's quite an impressive stat. I think Solanke, you know, there's definitely limitations to his game, but I think there's a good player. And I think when you've got when you look at it in the perspective of Ange's system and what Ange's system wants, 
I think it's a really good addition to Tottenham. I think the worry at Tottenham is the injuries. And the thing is, they were here this time last year with Mickey van der Ven and Romero injured. It then got to the point where Ben Davies was playing left centre-back. I think Ben Davies is a good squad player. I think he does a job at left centre-back. He does a job at left-back. But they should have got a second centre-back in the summer. They should have. I know Dragerson came in in January, but they need that extra player. They need someone that could maybe play left-back and left centre-back. Maybe a Luka Bar, maybe a Schlotterbeck type signing. Carla could have been quite good for them because their biggest issue is defensive injuries and they're now having to result to Ben Davies and Dragerson at the back if something is there with Romero or Archie Gray at the back. who can play centre-back, but he is brought in to be a DM long-term. I think that would be the big question in Tottenham and maybe something they should have addressed. Tottenham fans, let me know your thoughts down below. I am rushing through this because I'm literally about to go live on Alice Talks Football. It's half past now as we speak. So... Um, I do apologise if I spoke fast and, ru and rushed through this, but I've got to go and do a watch along for Man United versus Chelsea. Thank you for watching. Bye.